Demonstration of mastery. If you guys can do this, I will dub you a physicist. We did the problem where we had the projectile, and this, it was a gun, it was, it was a bullet being fired from a gun, and the bullet had some trajectory, right? The last problem is very similar, but instead of a gun, instead of a gun, it's going to be a ball on a ramp. And the ball is going to be up here on the ramp, and the ramp is on a table. And the table is a certain height above the ground. Let's say that the table is one meter above the ground. And that the height of the ramp is two meters. The ball is going to roll down the ramp. It's going to go into projectile motion. And I want you to tell me where to put the cup. What is the distance D? It's very, very, very similar to the, the gun problem, right? You would need to know the velocity of the bullet, or the ball, when it leaves the table. You know what the height of the table is, so you can calculate the time of flight. So if you know the velocity and the time of flight, then you know the distance, all right? The way you figure out the velocity is to know the kinetic energy. The way you know the kinetic energy is to know what the gravitational potential energy is. Let me say that again. This ball has a certain amount of in energy by virtue of the fact that it's two meters above the end of the ramp. All that gravitational energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy, the energy of motion, when it goes flying off the table. When it goes flying off the table, it's going to be going at a certain speed, which you can figure out from its kinetic energy. Once you know the speed and you know the time of flight, then you know the distance. So let's work it real quick. Up here, let's calculate the gravitational potential energy of the ball. We need to know what its mass is. Say the mass of the ball is 0.1 kilogram. So GPE is equal, GPE is equal to MGH is equal to 0.1 times 9.8 times the height above the end of the ramp, which is two meters, okay? All right, oh gosh. Someone keep up with me on the calculations, all right? So I don't have to pause to do this. Uh, 0.1 times 9.8 times two meters of height. 1.96. 1.96 joules doesn't sound like a lot of joules. But if all that gravitational potential energy is converted into Ke, Ke is equal to one-half mv squared. I want to know what v is, so I have to solve for v. v is equal to the square root of 2 times Ke divided by the mass. This is what you want to write in your notes, because that's the one that you're going to have to do the algebra for. You want to be able to recognize that one. I'm not going to give that one to you. I'll give you what Ke is, and you'll have to solve for what, veloc what velocity is. Since I know that all my Ke came from my GPE, and I know what the value of the GPE is, then all I have to do is write 2 times 1.96 divided by the mass of the object, which is 0.1. Take the square root of the whole thing. 6.26 actually is pretty booking for a marble. 6 meters a second is going pretty fast. All right, finally, hang with me, hang with me. If I know the velocity, velocity is equal to distance times time, in order to find out the distance, distance would be d is equal to velocity times time. Where does the time come from? All right. Time comes the, from the free fall equation. This is another one you need to have in your notes. Free fall. Free fall comes from the equation of motion that y is equal to 1 half gt squared. This time we want to know what t is. So t is equal to the square root of 2y over g. Y, y is the height of the table. It's only one meter high. All right? So t is equal to 2 times 1 divided by 9.8, which is gravity, and you take the square root of the whole thing. 
0.45 seconds, about a half a second time for that thing to fall. I know V, which is 6.26. I know T, which is 0.45. So I now we know what D is. 2.81 meters. That's where I place the cup. Whoosh. All right. If you didn't get all that, I will put it up on the internet.